Hey, how's it going? The name's Steffi, and welcome to another episode of my solo D&D actual play series, Tales of Fool's Gold. Last time, we met our first Pathfinder, Galdrin, as he uncovered a little bit of the map, finding a hunting ground for food, and having a chance encounter with a territorial dolphin. He managed to stealthily evade it, and managed to track it back to some kind of lair. Now, we create a party to venture inside and see what treasure we can get our hands on. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so, Galdran, the Pathfinder, returns back to civilization and sells his copy of the map that he's created so far. The local government has obtained this copy and made Galdran a wealthy man. However, though, Galdran told him about the, the dolphin he ran into, territorial, hostile, and told him that he followed it all the way back to his monster lair and recommends taking it out as it's quite close to one of the only points in the region where people can enter and exit from. So the government has issued a call to arms and many mercenaries, warriors, vagabonds has answered that call in exchange for money, fame, or just general exploration. Okay, so we're going to be constructing our first party now. Now, I do have um, some ways of, you know, changing, expanding, lowering the party, that kind of malarkey. But we're going to go through this one bit at a time. Now, uh, just to let you know um, that these PCs, like Galdron, will be randomized, random. Um, basically, everything be random. The race, the class, the equipment they have, the spells and the abilities they take, the the ASIs as well as the feats. And of course, I've got a special rule for multi-classing as well. So it should be pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to be creating the first of the PCs of the party. Right, so I'm going to do this one in depth, and then the rest I will sort of do like a super cut. Because, you know, I don't want to make this uh, episode too long. So, yeah. So, here's what's going to happen. So, before we create anything, we're going to determine the number of people in this party. The number of people in this party could determine what kind of encounter we'll face. Now, if you guys remember the encounter maker from the last episode, um, you can choose how many people was in the party. So, obviously, the higher the people, the more monsters would be fighting. So... Let's start off with a nice healthy D6. So minimum of one, maximum of six. Okay, we've got two PCs. Alright. No, two PCs may seem quite low. Now I do have a system in place for um, for certain times during the campaign, but we'll talk about it in a second. Okay, so we're gonna be making two PCs. Perfect. Okay, so let's make uh actually I might be able to make both in the same episode. Hmm, we'll see. Okay, right, anyway, let's randomize our first race. So as remember, we use the randomizer on 5e.tools. Randomize fourth, which we pick on the fifth. Or on the fifth one, that's what we get. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so Mark of Warding Dwarf. Now, just to let you know, um, I'm going to be taking every race, every class, every subclass, magic, item from every single source book that's available. I'm not fussed about just using the, P the, the PHP or Sanfers or Tasha's or anything. I mean, this is er Erebon, I think it is. Yep, Erebon, uh, Rising from the Last War, so I'm using every book. No problem. Okay, so we got Dwarf, Mark of Warding, so two Constitution, one Intelligence, and by the way, um, I'm not going to be using Tasha's. Um, Custom stat things, because, um, you know, with that book, you can choose the 2 plus 1. I'm just going to keep it the way it is, no problem. Okay, so we've got medium, 25 feet. Okay, dwarf is a uh, medium size. Yep, medium size. Uh, speed, not reduced by wearing heavy armor, maximum 25. Dark vision, dwarven resistance, bleh, dwarven resilience. Fantasy to save throws against poison. You have resistance against poison damage, very nice. Dwarven combat training, proficiency in battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, and warhammer. Tool proficiencies as well, yep, gonna be using all this if possible. Stone cunning, where we're making intelligence check related to the origin of stonework. We're considered proficient in the history skill and that double proficiency, so it's basically expertise. We get water's intuition. 
where we make an investigation check, credibility roll, use these tools, we can add a four and add a number roll to the number check. War the seals, we can cast alarm and mage armor. Uh, arcane lock as well, and that's once per long rest. But we can use spell slots on it, I believe. I think so. Um, no, does say actually. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, we get spells on the mark, and we get spell cast in the pack table. These spells become available. So yeah, so we got our uh, alarm, our faggy face, I can lock, knock, yada yada. Yeah, it's pretty cool actually. Pretty cool. Right, so now that we have dwarf, dwarf at the mark of warding, cool. Okay, now we're going to be randomizing backgrounds as well. Now, to tell you the truth, these features, the suggested characteristics, which is personality trait, ideal, is what gives us our alignment. But on the floor, I am not going to be taking it into advantage at all. The only thing I'm doing, really, is just for the extra skill proficiencies. Uh, the equipment could come in handy as well, like for example, Holy Symbol, that's used for uh, Cleric and Paladin spellcaster focuses, so... Like, it save us a bit of money or whatever, I don't know yet. But yeah, basically I'm just doing this for the skill proficiencies and the tool proficiencies that it comes with as well. So let's roll four times and the fifth one, that is ours. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, Baldur's Gate Acolyte, we get Insight and Religion. Uh, two languages as well as the Holy Symbol. Or Prayer Wheel. Uh, oh sorry, Prayer, prayer Book. Yep, or Prayer Wheel. Five sticks of Incense, vest of uh, Vestments. Set of common clothes and a belt patch containing 15 gold pieces. Nice. Right, okay, so now we're going to be choosing classes. Now, just to let you know, again, I will be using everything. So that's including Artificer as well. I know Artificer can be a little overpowered to some people, especially with firearms. And yes, I will be allowing firearms as well. I'm basically allowing anything and everything. Trust me. Right, so we're going to pick up class. So we have the choice between the Artificer, Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. Um, later on down the line as well, I might introduce some other uh, homebrew classes as well. Like for example, Matt Mercer's uh, Bloodhunter. And I might actually eventually add some uh, homebrew subclasses as well, just to spice things up a little bit. Obviously, I'll have a look at the ones that I'm familiar with, because I'm familiar with a few, not much, but we'll see. But anyway, right now we're just going to do the base classes, so let's go one, two, I think that's two, yep, okay, three, four, five. Okay, so we have a dwarf, okay, so we've got a dwarf monk, all right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right, so also as well, we can randomize subclasses as well, but because we're level 1, we do not have any subclasses. We got a subclass of Monk at level 3, but at level 1, we just get Unarmed Defense, AC equals 10 plus Dex plus Wisdom, and we get access to Martial Arts as well. So, here's the other thing we're going to be doing as well. Um, of course, we get the proficiencies, but... I'm also going to choose the skills as well, so I'm going to do that now on screen. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, so that is acrobatics and one, two, three, and religion. Now, if we do have a, if we do have a, the same proficiency with the background, I'll just choose a different one. Um, every single person is going to start off with starting equipment. So we can either go with A or B here, a short sword or a simple weapon, and then choose Dungeoneer's pack or Explorer's pack, and then 10 darts. So we'll do that first then. So we'll do a D2. Okay, so we get any simple weapon. So we're going to go to the new tab, and we're going to go to the items. I think if my OBS is showing it, it is perfect. And then basically, we can choose between. Club, dagger, great club, hand axe, stuff like that. So we're going to randomize five times. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, oh, five. Okay, so we're going to start off with a sickle. 1d4 slashing, light, cool. So yeah, so we're going to start off with a, so what, it's a short sword? Huh, yeah, short sword's martial. Huh, I thought a short sword was a um, simple weapon. But yep, yeah, we got sickle, cool. So we're going to start off with a sickle. 
Uh, okay, so we're going to do a D2 again for the Dungeoneers and the Explorers pack. So, all right, so we've got the Explorers pack, which is going to contain a bedroll, backpack, mess kit, tinderbox, 10 torches, 10 days of rations, a water skin, and 50 feet of hemden rope. No. Each person, no, obviously his thing. Uh, you have an option to do starting equipment or to gold buy. So, alternatively, you may start with 5d4 GP to begin your own equipment. Or to buy your own equipment. Um, I'm going to give everybody a starting gold as well. But it's going to be starting gold divided by 2, I think. Uh, basically, there is a reason why. Because we've only got two PCs and I'm going to talk about the recruitment system. Uh, recruitment system that I've created for this uh, campaign. So, let's see what we've got. Okay, so we start with 15 gold, divide by 2, so that's going to be, well, we'll do rounded down, so we'll class it 7 now. So we start with 7 gold. Okay, and now for the most important thing of them all, the stats. So, we're going to go, we find it, Dwarf Mark of Warden, uh-huh. Okay, so we've got a background, the Baldur's Gate Acolyte. This only comes available if certain backgrounds have like a feed or a stat increase, but for the most part we could just ignore that. Right, so, so here comes the stats then. So, again, we're going to roll four times, and on the fifth one, that's our stats, and then we're going to randomly assign it. Now, that's what, that is what we're going to get. So, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. I'll tell you something, I saw an 18 and a 17, and that was nice. And then randomly assign. Ooh, okay, that is uh, <laughs> interesting. So, I'm a dwarf monk. Is gonna, uh, well, I guess we'll go marker warning. Dwarf marker warding is gonna get 7 strength, 12 dex, 16 constitution, 14 intelligence, 18 wisdom, and charisma. 30, 13 charisma. Holy smokes. Right, okay, so we're gonna be doing the second PC now. So we'll do this a little quicker. Okay, so let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, so we got a shifter. Perfect. So, Beastal uh, Instincts, Challenge the Beast Within, your proficiency, one of the following skills, Acrobatics, Athletics, Intimidation and Survival, Dark Vision, Shifting as a bonus action, we can assume a more Beastal Appearance, Last for one minute, uh, we gain temporary hit points equal to two times proficiency bonus, and we can shift a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus. Not bad. Wherever we shift, we gain additional benefit based on one of the following options, and we can choose between Beast Hide, Long Tooth, Swift Stride, and Wild Hunt. And that's one of the advantages of the um, the monsters of the multiverse. Especially with the Shifter here. Normally, um, with the other Shifters, you can only pick one from Ebron, but with this one, you can actually choose. Which is perfect. Actually, it's quite good, actually. Because we can get additional temporary hit points and a plus one to our AC. Or we can make unarmed strikes with our fangs, which is piercing damage, 1d6 plus strength modifier. Yeah, very good. Okay, just going to quickly choose the background. So let's go one, two, three, four, and five. So we've got Charlton. So we've got skill proficiency and deception, slave hand, disguise kit and forgery kit. Cool. And we get a set of fine clothes, disguise kit, tools of the can of the con of your choice. Ten stopper bottles filled with cut liquid, a set of weighted dice, and a deck of marked cards, or a signet ring of an imaginary duke. And a belt pouch containing fifteen. Okay, we're going to choose a class now. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got a shifter sorcerer. <laughs> Definitely not something I expected, but that's pretty cool. Okay, so coming down here, we have a d6 hit die. Uh, proficiencies is dagger, darts, sling, quarter staffs, light, crossbells, not bad. Save throws, constitution, and charisma. Right, let's quickly choose our two proficiencies we get. So we can choose two. So that's six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We get religion. And we get persuasion. So persuasion and religion. Nice. Okay, let's go a D2 for the first of the starting equipment. So we can have a light crossbow or any sort of weapon. One, so it's a light crossbow. Then we'll choose again for the component pouch or market focus. Component pouch. D2 again for the Dungeoneers pack or Explorers pack. One. Okay, Dungeoneers pack. Perfect. And then we're going to rock this and divide by 2. 120, so divide by 2, that'll be 60 gold. Perfect. Okay, and finally, here's the other thing as well. Um, we can do spells. 
So at level 1, we can learn 4 cantrips and 2 level 1 spells. So we're just going to filter this out pretty quickly. So we've got Sorcerer class. Let's go cantrips. Let's go randomize our cantrips first. Yep, like I said, everything is going to be randomized. So we can only learn 4 cantrips. So let's have a look. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so it's Poison Spray. I remember that. So, one, two, three, four, five, ray of frost, so poison spray, ray of frost. One, two, three, four, five, mending, and then one, two, three, four, five, lightning lore. Perfect. All right, so that's the four cantrips. And then we'll filter the level 1 spells, and we can only learn two level 1 spells as of now. So, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got Charm Person, and one, two, three, four, five. Burning Hands, not bad. Also as well, a level 1 Sorcerer, we can choose our subclass. So we're going to randomize the subclass, and yes, I'm going to allow everything. As being shown here. And... One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so Divine Soul. Not bad. So Divine Soul Sorcerer. So with Divine Soul Sorcerer, basically, um, to put it simply, we get Divine Magic. Uh, Divine Soul? Okay, that's just a flavor sex. But yeah, so we get Divine Magic. Uh, basically, when you use spell castles, you learn to replace a sorcerer cantrip or a sorcerer spell level one. You can choose a new spell from the cleric spell list. So basically, we get access to the cleric spells. You must otherwise obey the restrictions selected in the spell and it becomes a sorcerer spell for you. In addition, choose an affinity for the sorcerer you define power, good, evil, law, chaos, and neutrality. You'll learn an additional spell based on the entity as shown below. It's a sorcerer spell for you, but it does not count against your number of sorcerer spells known. If you later replace a spell, you must replace it with a spell from the spell list. Okay, and do we learn? Do we lose or learn any more? Nope. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is, um, we are going to. And space value must replace it from a spell. So basically, it doesn't make much of a difference. So let's see. Well, let's roll a d5, and that'll tell us what we're gonna do. Chaos B. Okay, so we'll learn B. Okay, I'll do. Uh, basically, again, with the if in the alignment, I'm not going to do anything with the alignment. If it says something regarding alignment, you can choose one thing or the other. I'll just roll a D, whatever, and then that's the thing I'm going to get. Right, okay, I forgot to do the stats for the shifter. <laughs> Alright, let's do this quickly. Right, okay, so let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 16, 15, double 4, triple 14, and 10. Not bad. Okay, let's randomly assign. Okay, now that looks good for a sorcerer. So we've got 10 strength. Oh, hold on. So one other thing we need to do. I forgot about the the thing with the multi the immune verse. Okay, so we, so we go plus 2 plus 1. Alright, let's do a d6. 5, so that's going to increase our wisdom by 2. And then a d6. 1. Yeah, so let's want to check something. Ah, you can't. Okay, so we need to go d5 next time. Okay, makes sense. Alright, okay, then some final stats for our Shifter Sorcerer. We got 11 Strength, 16 Dex, 14 Constitution, 14 Intelligence, 16 Wisdom, and 15 Constitution. Right, okay. So, we got the party set up. So, that's going to be the party token. I might have a different token for each party, but basically, this one's going with just some standard token I found on Google Images. Right, let's introduce you to we have. Right, okay, so we have Goran Momri Mindbuster. Again, using Night Cafe for the random AI image and token stamp for the token. And of course, we have Laura, our Divine Soul Shifter. Again, using Night Cafe for the image and token stamp for the ring. Uh, also, by the way, I'm um, using a random name generator as well. Um, I'll put the link in the description if I remember. Right, okay, so yes, we have our uh, we have our character sheet. Obviously, this is just a quick reference one. Um, I do have a I do have something set up where we can see it properly. But yeah, basically um, the screenshot for the character sheet where I got it from. Um, if I switch over to if I switch over to this one. 
yeah. You have a better looking one. Better quality and all that, but to be honest, the, uh... The one that I have in Paint 3D, it's just for quick reference. Doesn't matter about the letters being bundled up like that, or the... The names being unreadable. Does not make a difference in any way, shape, or form to me. Right, okay, so now we come to the important section. The recruitment system that I have uh, have in plan for this. So, taking these two level 1s into the monster layer is going to be suicide. So, that's why I have decided to um, allow the party to hire some mercenaries. So, if we go over to uh, this window. And... Let me get it off myself, if I find it. Perfect. Basically, we can hire anybody of a challenge rating for one eighth to whatever. That's a humanoid, right? Now, the cool thing about this uh, site, 5e, is we can actually sort it by environment. So, Arctic, coastal, desert, forest, grassland, hill, mountain, swamp, underwater, yada yada, right? So... Because there's only two party members, I would imagine that this party wants to get some hirelings. No. There is three ways that we can do this. Actually, no, I'm going to have four different types of recruitment we can do. Okay, so when it comes to recruitment, there's going to be four different types of recruitment. Militia, men at arms, hirelings, and heroes. So... Militia and Man at Arms are decided to treat as in the same rules as the Conjure Animal spell. So, Conjure Animals, it says here, uh, your summon face spirits to take the form of beasts and appear in your unoccupied space so you can see within range, yada yada yada. Choose one of the following options for what appears. One beast of challenge rate 2 or lower, two beasts of challenge 1 or lower, four of one half or lower, or eight, one quarter or lower. So, the beasts rating in this case for us will be the humanoids the militia will be four one half or lower and the eight of one quarter or lower so for example we could have for example we could have eight totals for example we could hire eight totals or we can go eight bandits or whatever right so basically, one and a half and lower is militia. Two and lower, so twos and ones, so for example, a druid or bandit captain will be man at arms. Hirelings, um, I'm not going to show here. Um, hirelings are going to be a randomized race and they're going to take Tasha's psychic classes. So they'll be between warrior, expert, or mage. I'll go over that in time. And the heroes is going to be a just another PC creation at a higher cost. Okay, so the cost. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, once we've chosen our once we randomized our mercenaries, right? And here's the thing, I'm gonna have a randomizer. Basically, I'll do like 1D4 depending on who we can have. And then followed by how many of that person that group has, right? But in terms of price, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the CR times a D20 in price. So, for example, a 1 is 100%, so it could be 20 gold. So, for example, if I were to roll a D20 now, 4, and I wanted to get a C-spot, right? So, that would be 4 gold to buy, right? Or four gold to hire. And then I'll do like a D4 or something. So to hire four C spawns, that'll cost me four times four, which would be 16, so 16 gold, right? But here's the thing. After that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll a D8, and that's gonna determine how many days that group we can hire for. So in this case, a 16 gold to hire the three days. And after the three days or the three turns, what happens is they will have a, a morale check. I think it'll be like a D20, like a Q&A sort of thing. And if they 
Basically, if we ask the question, are they going to stay for another day? Under the pretense of getting more gold or more treasure or whatever, right? And then, you know, 1 to 9 is no, 11 to 20 is yes. And then, you know, they can stay around. If not, then they'll just leave. And then we'll have to carry on with what we're doing. Um, there is also random events where we can possibly recruit somebody for the party full-time through uh, TSAT. But, yeah. Okay, right, so we're going to make our first choice. Because I'm going to say that this party wants to hire somebody. The two of them are not going to do much. They will get taken out, so they need more mon numbers. So, they're going to pull together their gold pool. And if we switch back to... We switch back to P3D. As you can see, Doran, which I'm just going to call them that for short, has 21 gold, and Flora has 75. So that is 96 gold altogether. Right? Okay. So the party has got their orders to go to this monster layer to clear up the monster layer of dolphins, right? Looking at each other, they've realized that they're the only two that accepted this job and they're going to need some extra help. So they head over to one of the hiring halls or mercenaries, mercenary guilds to request some more help. So we're going to do a D4 of how many groups is available. Okay, so one. So there's only one group available. So now we're going to randomize on which one it is. If we're going to get mana arms or we're going to get a... A militia, a militia group, let's have a look. So we're gonna start at coastal, so you know we're gonna keep the coastal just for uh just for sake of ease, but depending on where the party is, and on the flip side as well, depending on if we find a settlement or not, but there's always a chance that we can recruit some more people for the party. So let's have a look. So we're gonna randomize five times, fourth, and then sorry, we're gonna randomize four times and then we're gonna pick on the fifth. Alright, so one, two. Three, four, five. Okay, so we've got tribal warriors. So the representative says we've got some tribal warriors available. So hide armor at 12, 11 hit points, which will randomize. 30 speed, 13 strength, 11 dex, 12 constitution, 8 intelligence, 11 wisdom, 8 charisma. And we've got pat tactics. Warriors advantage on attack roll of a creature at least one of the warrior's allies within 5 feet of the creature and the ally is capacitated, and we have a spear. Plus three to hit, 1d6 plus one piercing, or 1d8 plus one if being with two hands. So, standard warrior. Okay, now we're going to roll a d4 to see how many people are within this group. One person. So we get one tribal warrior. Interesting. Okay, so now we're going to roll a d20 and we're going to see how much this person is. So remember, it's... One eighth times whatever we roll. So that is equivalent to 12.5. I looked up. So let's have a look. Nine. So I'm going to do a quick calculation. Okay. So 12.5% of nine is one. So what we're going to do is we're going to class this as one gold, 100 silver, and 25 copper pieces. So that's how much it's going to be. Or. In this case, we'll just call it two gold. Yeah, we'll call it two gold since nobody's got any copper pieces or anything like that. So, one tribal warrior is going to cost two gold pieces. And then we're going to roll a d10 to see how many days he'll stick around for. Six days. So, six turns. Perfect. Ooh, okay, so one tribal warrior. Well, I'll get it set it up. I'll get it set up in a second. Okay ready we're finally finally ready okay so you may notice we don't have the life index anymore the reason why is because we don't really need it for this because here's the thing the party has rations that we're going to be using um we might do survival checks if we've run out of rations to see if we can find anything but basically if they land on but if they land on hun uh, one of the hunting grounds Basically, we can just roll like a survival check or a d4 to get some rations. But basically, 
I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. Um, maybe we could do some kind of survival thing with rations. But at this point, I mean, I'm going to say that they're well stocked and well supplied and they're used to adventuring. Where the Pathfinder works a bit different. They don't really have survival experience, you know. Well, they do, but what I mean is like they're not as well prepared as parties would be. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a choice. Do we start from the swamp or do we start from the coastal tree? Now, I did do a little bit of a mistake in the last episode. Um, swamp tiles are four moot points. Um, yeah, I forgot to go over that. I mean, if we go to... Uh, if we go to Adult Survival, if I can get it up, uh, Adult Survival, yeah, Swamp Tiles are four movement points, so I have to remember that. But I think for now, what we're going to do is, we are going to start at the same place where the Pathfinder started, which was here. So, the party, Flora and Doran, with the new young, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say young tribal warrior who's been hired out, the only person who's available. Probably one of the first mercenaries to join the expedition and offer the services to rest on the way in time. Um, also as well, I'm just going to keep a little count of how many days or how many movements they have. So we're going to start here. Okay, so... Let's talk about the party movement. So, unlike the Pathfinder, where they can move 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, depending on the life index, parties are going to move at their slowest rate around the down. So, what I mean is the slowest speed of the party member. So, for us, it's going to be Doran here, a dwarf who is 25 speed. Now, the way I'm going to do it is each hex is going to cost 10 foot of speed. Now, 25, can't really do much with that, so what I'm going to do is we're going to take 25 round down, so we can only move two spaces at a time. We're still going to do our dice rolls for straight line, 3, 4, 5, make one turn, 6, we can make any turns we want. So, but we're going to have to land on the layer itself. Yeah, basically we're going to land on the layer for us to be there. So even from here, we can just roll whatever, go straight up. We have to make a turn in somehow, so we need to land on the monster layer at the end of our turn in order to do what we need to do. But here's the other thing as well. We're going to incorporate... We're going to incorporate random events. At the end of every movement phase, when we're in a certain terrain, we're going to roll on... No, we're going to roll on the corresponding overarching terrain table. So in this case... Hills, Gully, Waterway, Smallwood, Rocky Outcrove, Unmarked Settlement, yada yada. And this can give us a random event. So for example, if we rolled on, uh, say, a Rocky Outcrove, I think I already went over this. Well, I'll say, well, go Gully, since Gully was there, right? So, because we, if we roll onto a Gully, uh, Coastal, yeah, Gully, we're going to roll on another table, the Gully table here. And basically, this is going to be our landmarks. The Pathfinder is responsible for settlements, terrain, uh, sorry, settlements, terrain, settlements, terrain, monster layers of dungeons, where the party can come across little POIs like this. So, for example, um, if we roll a 58 or 64, Rocky Gully containing caves, we have a 25% chance of an easy encounter, Q&A investigation rolls to investigate caves, 50% chance they lead to tunnels, 10% non-player character. Right? Or, for example, we could find a druid, or wizard, or fey creature lives here. 50% friendly, 50% clue. Gully, with evidence of mining, may lead to fire and ground, go to random dungeon generator, where we'll have a dungeon or so. So, basically, we can roll nature checks, and basically, it can just give us some more things for us to explore and do. But, of course, we still have to do our main quest of clearing out the dolphin layer itself. Okay, so that gives a quick explanation of some of the stuff we're going to be doing. So, let's finally start getting on with this. Okay, so, let's finally start rolling. Okay, so let's roll a d6, going to determine our direction. Six. So, we can move in any way and make any turn possible. 
So I think what we're going to do is we're going to move. I'm going to move one up here. So that's one movement. I'm going to move up here. That's two movement. Okay. So now that we're there, we're going to do. So that's one day. But before we mark off anything, let's roll on the coastal table. Okay, so we're going to roll on the coastal table now. So it's a D100. Let's see what it gives us. One. Okay, so continuing coastal terrain. If it's anything under a 60, that's no event. That's fine. That's no event. That's completely fine. Okay, so now's the end of the day. That's one day gone, five. Also, that's an end of, also as well, that's an end of a day. So let's scratch that down to nine rations. I do have um, 10 rations here for flora as well. So I'm just going to put a nine here so I know which one it is. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's nine rations, right? So let's roll again then. Okay. We've scrolled down the rations. Now the question is, do we get an encounter? So D6. So remember, five to six is an encounter. It says here. Oh, sorry, on the uh, the PDF, a five or six is a chance for an encounter. So let's look, do we have an encounter? Two. We do not. Okay. So next day passes. Okay. Movement phase. Got a five. So we can make one turn. So starting in any direction, moving one or more hexes, can make one directional change available. And just like that, we go one, two, and we're into the dungeon. That's our first expedition. Doran, our dwarf monk. Flora, our shifted divine soul sorcerer, and our tribal warrior militiamen. What awaits them will be revealed next time. Take care.